Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this, the day in the life of SaaS FinOps on SaaS intelligence. This product's been taking the world by storm and put together a mini product tour for you to see the power of it, how you can leverage it for yourself. My name is David Apple, head of the SaaS vertical here at Sage Intact. Joining me is Chris Price, head of the SaaS vertical for Baker Tilly Digital. I want to kind of set the tone on this. It's an amazing dashboard that you can leverage in order to pull the product together. Just look at the start of this. Here's a cash position with the key metrics that you need and then the trending over time. And that expands into other cohorts and detail that you want. And then it gets into a whole set of dashboard metrics that you can adjust to your business based upon what's happening in the financial system so you can count on the data and it's real time built upon the roles that you need, whether you're the CFO, the controller, RevOps, product management, the CEO, and the different things that you need in order to manage the data. Because let's talk about the operating environment we're in right now. In the new cloud environment, funda excuse me, fundability comes down to whether or not you're in control of the core levers of your business. You need this. And if you don't do it, you're really putting yourself at risk. Let's talk about how it, well, we all do it today, right? Spreadsheets. Data's in there, looks good. But then if the information's perhaps inaccurate, the spreadsheet version's old, it's missing data, you can really put yourself at risk. And then this little things can happen like gross variances. And like here, just the example of NRR, really where did that come from? And how much of it is the data cleansing issue? Let's just walk through a real life example of this coming out. Let's just say you got your NRR off 1%. And you think you're right, but then due diligence is happening when you're trying to do the fundraising. Just say you're 10 million and a seven times multiple, $70 million that's in there. But the investor realizes in doing that analytics, because you're in spreadsheets, there's a 1% error in uh, N, uh, excuse me, NRR. That's an $8 million swing to your post money valuation, as well as the loss of confidence in everybody in your data and then loss of confidence in you. Don't put yourself in that position. Chris is now going to make the product come alive and talk to you about the different metrics that you can collect for yourself. Chris? Thanks, David. So today we're going to talk about SaaS Intelligence. It's a fully automated SaaS metrics tracking application that's built directly in Sage Intact. It categorizes your recurring revenue activity that's happening within your customer subscription base into over 30 categories of recurring revenue, not just the typical four that you might see uh, in spreadsheets or in other systems. This depth of, uh, of recurring revenue activity enables the application to produce over 50 investor-grade KPIs, 40 plus reports and graphs across seven insightful dashboards that really help you analyze your business through a, a, a set of different lenses. Let's take a look. When I'm in a SaaS intelligence environment, what I could see here is that I quickly have access in real time to data that helps me understand what's going on within the business. I have quick hit indicators that help me understand the trajectory and momentum of what's going on within my customer subscription base with a number of additional reports that help me keep granular track on what's really driving the business, how much new value is being generated, how much expansion is happening through my add-ons, my upsells, my cross-sells, my uplifts and the like. And then a number of visualizations that really bring that information to life makes me, uh, enables me to really understand the growth and trajectory of the business. Not only that, as I want to look down and understand what's actually driving that momentum and where might I have uh, issues or, or, or challenges within my customer base, I can uh, filter that information and look at it by segmentation, look at it by, by my enterprise customers, my mid-market customers or SMB. I can also filter the data by my products, if I want to look for a particular product or a particular product family, my enhanced AI versus my machine learning uh, set of products. And this enables me to, instead of having to go back to the drawing board every time in Excel to, to try to get this information, I have it directly at my fingertips. I can explore the data to find those areas where I can take action, whether that's to go and pour more money in, to go generate more uh, opportunities, against particular types of customers or across different products, or if I need to go figure out how to mitigate churn that may be dragging my recurring revenue growth down. And then of course, I can look at that information on a variety of basis, whether I wanna look at it from a retention perspective to see what's going on with my retention rates, my revenue renewal rates, 
or across my unit economics to understand what's the operational efficiency of my organization? How much is it costing me to acquire that next new customer? What's my customer retention cost? What's my payback period for that customer acquisition? And what's my LTV to CAC ratio? Am I not spending enough to go out and buy those customers that uh, are, are producing a high level of long-term ROI? And then of course, cash. Cash is always king. I wanna keep in mind, now how much, how much cash do I have today? And what kind of runway is that? And how might I need to be thinking about my next uh, round of funding or capital planning? And then of course, audit, to bring that all together, to make sure that you understand not only how much recurring revenue you have today, but how that's forecasted out into the future, how that's going to be renewed, how I tie that back to my actual recurring revenue, not only the CMRR that I'm stating, the committed monthly recurring revenue that's happening in real time as transactions are being booked, but also how I, how I uh, reconcile that against the revenue that I'm recognizing across periods. And then being able to produce a number of additional reports that showcase that information across time, looking at things like my CMR by customer by month, you know, these types of reports that are table stakes when it comes to due diligence and being able to utilize a system that's been tracking that information in an automated fashion all along the way, it's been being reconciled by your team so that when you go and stick that information into a data room, you have the utmost confidence that what you're presenting to the, to the investors is accurate and you don't have to worry about those surprise haircuts, as David mentioned before, coming out, coming out of uh, due diligence. So David, I'll pass it on back to you. Folks, can you see it for yourself? CFOs, picture planning for a board meeting like this. RevOps, picture trying to do the forecast and the plan based upon this information. Product, imagine getting this kind of data back to how you're trying to design the next product and the success of what you rolled out and CEOs giving this kind of confidence to your board and your employee base or the company meetings that come from this. We're singularly unique in our ability to be able to help you accomplish all this. Like Chris said, over 30 of the core metrics, via 40 of the key KPIs and 50 of the major graphs and reports that you're trying to make all this come together. And this is all back against the backdrop that we support over 500 different billing models in the company revenue recognition that above and beyond what uh, SAS intelligence is able to do, amazing financial reports and FP&A planning, we have over 200 different investor metrics produced up to 80% faster because it's all in one place done real time. And then when you want to get started, we can get up and running in as little as 60 days for getting your historical data and your GL and your chart of accounts and dimensions in place, which is the foundation you need to produce this report, but then it's all there. And then when you get it all from us, we've done a lot of analytics on this. It's up to 40%, if not more or less than if you bought multiple products from multiple vendors and tried to stitch them together yourself. So I hope this was helpful for you. These amazing business outcomes you can drive. If you want to learn more, simply go to sage.com slash us slash sage ahead, sage.com slash us slash sage ahead in order to learn more. Chris, thank you for making the product come alive. All of you, I hope we whet your appetite. We're able to speak further with you so you can get these kind of outcomes for yourself and avoid this level of risk for yourself. Everybody, please have a great day.